Uh, good evening friends. Today we are going to discuss uh, an important topic from nephrology, renal fibular acidosis. Uh, conventionally divided into type 1, type 2 and type 4. So these are less importance but most common form associated with uh, moderate renal insufficiency and most commonly this one is associated with hyperkalemia. The most important thing here you need to remember is type 1 and type 2 are associated with hypokalemia whereas type 4 is associated with hyperkalemia. So if you get a question showing uh, finally that there is uh, some metabolic acidosis with hypokalemia always let type 1 or type 2 be a possible diagnosis in your mind so now let us start with the type 1 RTA so these are the 10 important points that you need to remember regarding type 1 RTA so as the name suggests that it is type 1 that's why it is classical and usually the defect is in the distal part that is in the collecting duct and the defect is decreased H plus excretion as you know that in the collecting duct there will be always H plus exchange so to maintain urine pH and also body pH when H plus is not being sent out it gets retained within the body causing increased H plus within the body resulting in acidosis as H plus is not going into the urine urine becomes less acidic and that's why the pH is usually less than 5.5 with the systemic acidosis and here the affection is only in the collecting tubule whereas the proximal tubule is functioning well the PCT usually functions in HCO3 minus reabsorption as this function is being maintained the filtered excretion will be less than 10 whereas in type 2 or TA the PCT is getting affected causing increased ex excretion of bicarbonate there it will be more than 10 and as you know in my previous video I have discussed what is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and what is urine anion gap positive so in renal fibular acidosis it will be normal anion gap metabolic acidosis and urine anion gap will be positive now coming to most important thing is hypercalciuria, hypocitruturia and renal stones. What happens is whenever there is acidosis or increased H plus within the body, to buffer this from the bones, calcium is being released. And also within the urine, when there is acidic medium within the body, the reabsorption of calcium is being reduced. That causes increased calcium within the urine resulting in hypercalciuria and what is the cause for hypocitraturia it is not clearly known uh, not known but what they say is mitochondria tend to utilize more amount of citrate during acidosis so that causes increased citrate reabsorption that results in decreased citrate in urine so what happens is the urine you get will be more amount of calcium and less citrate whenever in a medium calcium is more and less citrate is there that causes stone formation calcium stone or crystallization so the reason here is more calcium and less citrate within the urine and what is the reason for hypokalemia as you know that whenever there is acidosis you can expect some hypokalemia and also that usually within the distal part Na plus Na plus is being reabsorbed by K plus and H plus now what happens is this H plus pump is not working so all the Na plus will be reabsorbed by exaggerated amount of K plus that causes potassium wasting so initially Na plus had two paths, one by K plus and one by H plus. Now, this H plus path is being blocked so that all the K plus will be thrown out at expense of reabsorbing Na plus. And here there is no Fanconi syndrome that we will discuss in type 2.
So to remember it together, I have derived a mnemonic from uh, our famous Indian captain uh, Dhoni. So remember, D for distal and H for H plus ion and N for number one. So distal is number one, the defect is in H plus ion concentration and S, MS, in MS, S for stone formation. So you can remember easily in this manner. Then coming to type 2 renal tubular acidosis. So what are the differences with type 2 renal tubular acidosis? Here the proximal convoluted tubule is being affected. As I told you, the function is predominantly HCO3 minus reabsorption that is getting affected. So there will be less amount of HCO3 minus, so less amount of buffering that causes systemic acidosis. So what happens in urine? Initially, the HCO3 minus instead of getting reabsorbed, it is being thrown out within the urine. So, urine contains lot amount of bicarbonate initially, but once the body reserves of HCO3 declines, declines even within the urine, HCO3 minus declines. So, initially, as HCO3 minus is more in the urine, you get an alkaline pH. But later on, when the body resources decreases, there will be decreased excretion of HCO3- within the urine and finally it can become acidic. As you know, because the predominant defect is in HCO3- reabsorption, so more amount will be thrown out in the urine causing more amount of filtered HCO3-. So non-anion gap metabolic acidosis and urine anion gap, met and urine anion gap positive, you can refer my previous videos. And why there are no renal stones in type 2, renal stones in type 1? As you know, acidosis again predisposes to calcium buffering and calciurea. But in type 2, there can be a syndrome in PCT called as Fanconi syndrome. So this is PCT. Here along with HCO3- minus citrate, amino acids and glucose. All this reabsorption will be affected constituting Fanconi syndrome usually associated with type 2 renal tubular acidosis. Now what happens within the urine you will have more amount of calcium and more amount of citrate. When these two are in equilibrium there will be no crystallization or no stones. In previously we have seen more calcium less citrate here we are having more calcium with adequate citrate so there will be no crystallization and what is the cause of hypokalemia see always remember when the HCO3 minus reabsorption is affected NA plus reabsorption also will be affected all the NaCO3 which has to be reabsorbed in PCT will be thrown at distal convoluted tubule. Here it has to be reabsorbed with HCO3- minus, but it is not happening. So it will go to distal tubule. There the Na plus more amount of Na plus will come there. It will be reabsorbed with K plus. So previously when only 30 ions were coming at distal convoluted tubule, 30 K plus were usually sufficient. Now in the proximal convoluted tubule Na plus is not being reabsorbed. So more amount. So some 100 Na plus ions are going to the distal convoluted tubule, there more amount of potassium is being exchanged. So again there is potassium wasting. Now putting this together we have discussed why it is classic, why it is proximal. The defect here is H plus, here HCO3 minus, always pH more than 5.5, here initially alkaline but later acidic. So difference between filter HCO3 here and here. So this and uh, urine anion gap, you can refer my previous video. And why hypercalciuria, hypocitriuria, why hypercalciuria and hypercitriuria. So renal stones, no renal stones, again hypokalemia, hypokalemia and no Fanconi syndrome in type 1. And you can find Fanconi syndrome in type 2. Mnemonic to be remembered here is M as Dhoni. So D for distal. H for H plus ion concentration and Ni for number 1, type 1 and S for renal stones. Thank you.